Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this SDKFZ-222. It could also be built as the SDKFZ-223, which is a radio version, but as you'll see, I've not done that with my model. This is a 28mm or 156 scale plastic model from Rubicon Models. The back of the box is pretty much what I would expect from a Rubicon kit. There's a few paragraphs of information about the vehicle and its use, a picture of the decal sheet, some suggested Vallejo paint colours, and a couple of basic illustrations of some paint schemes you could apply to this model. Very good. What's inside? Inside we find some paper and plastic. Mostly plastic. All four sprues come in their own bags, which as I often say I think is a bit wasteful, but it does stop the parts from being lost and sprues catching on each other which could potentially cause damage. None of my sprues were damaged, not that I was expecting that to be the case. They do look very nice, and the detailing is crisp and neat, which having built a few Rubicon kits before is not surprising. Of course this is a gaming model, and it's in a relatively small scale, and I'm pretty sure I don't need to say it as often as I do, but that does mean that there is going to be some simplification and omission of detail. For its intended use, the detail does look pretty good. Of course, Rubicon do say that their kits can be used as display models too, and well, they can, obviously, but they are primarily for wargaming. Things on these sprues look neat and tidy, and I didn't find any defects or problems. And it looks like this kit is going to provide a few leftover bits for the good old bits box. Just like the box promised, there are also decals. This set is for German light armoured cars, and there is way more than enough to mark this one model. I'm sure many of us could find other uses for the leftover markings, so I always like to hang on to these and suggest that you do as well. And of course instructions are included as well. This is quite helpful when you would prefer not to guess at how these things go together. They're quite good, unsurprisingly, Rubicon's instructions always have been. They point out all of the different options and parts needed for different versions of the vehicle. This kit is the base for an upgrade kit to make an SDKFZ-260 or 261, and the instructions point out what you need to do for those as well. Not having the upgrade kit, I've chosen to build the regular old 222. Very good, let's begin. The first step is to glue these side frame parts on. This is pretty simple to do, though you might need to do a bit of nudging. Also you'll need to make sure to put these on the correct side. There isn't really any keying, but you should be able to see when you've got it on wrong. Then it's time for headlamps, which are to be mounted inside the upper hull part. I like that these come nicely mounted on a central bar thing. It makes installing them neatly a lot easier. You do have to be careful with how far forward or back these are tilted, but that's not too much to worry about. Or at least I don't think it is, it might be overwhelming for some, but probably not. The result is quite neat and easily done. The headlamps even line up with each other perfectly. It's a good idea to do this now, because the next step is gluing the upper hull to the lower. This isn't especially challenging, but it does require a bit of nudging and pressure to minimise the gaps. Then comes this front plate, I guess you'd call it. It needed a little bit of nudging to get the angle right, but it goes on easily enough. I think this is the right angle anyway. Then why not add one on the rear? Well, a different plate, it is quite different in appearance to the one on the front, but installation is much the same. That's some good butt protection. Then it's time for mufflers and exhaust. The instructions suggest to glue the two parts of these together before installation, but I found it worked a bit better to glue the pipe part to the hull, then glue the muffler onto that. It was still a bit fiddly and nudging was still needed, but I think this was a much better way of going about this. There is an exhaust for either side of the model, so do be sure that you put both on. Now it's time for some drilling of holes in the front mud guards. This is pretty simple and there are guides on the bottom of the parts. Once the holes are drilled, why not install those mud guards? There's a notch in the front of the hull that will help guide these into place. Some good front mud guards deserve rear mud guards, as the youth are always saying. So I installed the rear mud guards next. These don't need any drilling or anything like that, and the guides for them are quite obvious. It should be quite tricky to mess this up too badly. Next I glue this grill looking thing onto the rear of the hull, which is pretty easy and looks fairly neat. There is also an optional cover you could install over this, but clearly I've chosen not to do so. I think the grill looks a bit more interesting than the cover. 
Next, I add this platey thing with what looks to be a rear convoy light, which mounts onto a nub on the right rear mudguard. And another thing goes on the left rear mudguard, which might also have something to do with convoy lights, or it could be something totally unrelated. Then comes this, well, I don't know what it is, but it goes onto the front of the right rear mudguard. It could be some sort of roll or tube, or maybe it's a fire extinguisher, but I think it might be a bit too big for that. Whatever it is, it's on. Next, we return to those holes I drilled in the front mudguards and fill them with these width markers. These aren't difficult to place, and they just protrude straight upwards. Often these do have a bend in them, but I suppose this works fine as is. It's pretty easy to get these installed and lined up nice and neat with each other. Next comes a shovel for when the crew needs to dig, or if somebody challenges them to a shovel fight. This shovel is pretty easy to get into place, and it should be done before installing this next part, which is some sort of brackety thing. Whatever it is, it's not hard to get into place. And if the shovel is already there, you shouldn't have any issues. There is one of these for either side of the vehicle, though on the right hand side you don't have any shovels to worry about. Next, into the rectangular recesses, I mount an engine bay door. This is simple to get into place. And of course, there's another one for the right side, which is just as easy to install. All you really have to do is make sure the hinge parts are towards the top. There is an upper engine bay door on the top here, so we don't need to install that, but there is a box that should be mounted on top of that hatch. I think this is just a simple piece of stowage, but it does add some interest. And interest is, well, interesting. There are some big recesses on either side of the hull for the doors, and your crew should find these very helpful for ingress and egress. It doesn't look like you could easily put the doors on the wrong side, but make sure that you are using the correct part for the correct side anyway. Then I install the Notec convoy light on the front left mudguard, the one that has the mount for it. This is simple, though a little nudging was required, as is often the case with this sort of thing. I then install the front, well, you wouldn't call it a windshield, the plate with the looky holes in it. Call it what you will, I call it easy to install, though the fit isn't absolutely perfect, particularly at the front left side. I feel like now would be a really good time for those round rotatey ground contact devices, whatever you would call those. There's a D-shaped keying for these, to ensure that they go on the right way up. There's a slightly flattened part on these tyres that should contact the ground, which is to represent the weight of the vehicle. I then add the mount for the turret. There are two sets of holes for mounting stuff in here, and the forward pair is the appropriate one for this vehicle. This is simple enough, though it might have been a better idea to do this earlier in the build. Though I did manage to get my fat fingers in there, so I wouldn't really call it a problem. Next, a stowage box. Or at least I think it's a stowage box. It's a box of some sort, and it's installed on the left side of the hull. The guide slots for this make it quite obvious where it should go. A jack is then installed on the front of the left rear mudguard. This was actually quite fiddly to do, and there weren't any mounting points for it. I did eventually get it somewhere that looks like it's correct, but it probably would have been a bit easier to install this before the large box in front of it. Oh well, hindsight is always 2020. On top of that mudguard goes another stowage box. There were no guides for this either, but it's not all that difficult to get this into a good position. More stowage, this time in the form of jerry cans. The instructions say that these should be mounted on the front, as I'm doing, and you do get the choice between these and some other thing, which is a row of cylinders of some sort. I chose these because I thought they were more interesting, though I guess if you wanted you could mount the cylinders on the front and probably get away with mounting the jerry cans somewhere else on the vehicle. Then comes what appears to be a couple of ammo boxes, or something like that. These are shaped such that they'll fit along the slightly raised bit on the mudguard. A little bit of glue and they're on. Then it's time to deal with some of the internal parts. I glue this set of seats to this bottom loopy part. Let's pretend to be surprised that Herbert doesn't know what the name of this part is. I set that aside and glue the coaxial machine gun into the side of the main gun. I definitely pushed this too far into the slot, but we'll worry about that later. Then comes a magazine for the main gun. This is one area where the instructions were surprisingly not clear enough. A rarity for Rubicon models. I ended up putting it somewhere that looked right, though it probably isn't. It was annoying to fiddle around with this so much. I then clip these two parts around the pivot point of the main gun, 
and add glue so they stay together and hold the gun in place, without actually bonding the gun. I want this to be movable to make the rest of the assembly easy. Actually bonding it solidly into place might make it impossible, so leave it movable. A control wheel is also installed, and there's nothing tricky about this. Just be careful not to knock it out of place when handling the assembly. I suggest allowing some time for the parts to bond between each step here. The seat part is then connected to the main gun assembly. You can see that there's a sort of hook shape that connects to the bar part at the bottom of the seat assembly. That assembly can then go inside the hull, into the mounting point that we installed earlier, obviously. This is pretty simple stuff. The roof part can be installed next. You can see why leaving the gun movable makes this a lot easier to do. I apply some gap reducing pressure and the roof is in place good and proper. Now it's time for the turret. I glue the two halves of the turret together, which is pretty simple. You just have to make sure the parts are the right way around. Even I can do that. I set that aside to bond because even test fitting at this point poses the risk of the glue getting in places I don't want it, and either making a mess or bonding parts together where I don't want them bonded. While I'm doing that, I install the spare wheel which comes wrapped in, I guess, canvas? There isn't anything to guide this, but I think I've got it more or less in the correct place. After this, I test fit the turret. First, I realised that the coaxial machine gun was way too close to the main gun and wouldn't fit into the slots in the front of the turret. I fixed that by using glue to loosen the bond and just pulling the machine gun out a bit. Also, the turret fit way too tightly. My solution to this was to remove the turret locking tabs. Probably not the best idea, but it was the best I could do to get it to work properly. Maybe I did something wrong and maybe you'll get a better fit, but I found it almost impossible to even rotate the turret with these tabs on. I test fit again and it looked like everything was fine, but when I put the turret top on it simply wouldn't fit. It was caused by the main gun's magazine, and the solution was just to remove that magazine. With the turret roof on, you can't really see much of what's in there, or what isn't in there anyway. So while this was kind of annoying, I felt like it wasn't too bad a compromise. Anyway, with that, the plastic SDKFZ222 in 28mm scale by Rubicon Models is now completed. While the final couple of steps in putting this model together were a bit annoying, I still enjoyed the build, and I'm pretty happy with the result I've got. I think these armoured cars are pretty interesting and rather cool, and I think this model does them some justice. I am kind of interested in building another one, though a different version, probably the one that you need an upgrade kit for, the 260, which I believe, like the 223, is some sort of radio vehicle. Anyway, that's something for future Herbert to worry about. This is a pretty neat little model, though of course it does have its flaws. There's a few gaps around the place that I'm going to have to fill in before painting time, and as I just mentioned, the turret and gun fitting all together was a bit of a ball ache. And I have to say, this is one of the few Rubicon kits I've put together in recent memory that wasn't just simply a joy to put together. I mean, it was still enjoyable, mostly, but Rubicon has done better. Nonetheless, I'm happy with the result and I think it's going to make a fine addition to my bolt action German force. Though I really don't know how well this thing is going to work in the game. I guess with me in command it doesn't really matter. It has been a while since I actually built this model, so I don't remember if it took me one or two streams to get it done. I think it was one. Either way, it didn't take long at all, and this isn't an overly complicated project by any means. And on that note, if you want to watch me build stuff live on stream, complete with fantastic and not at all bad jokes and probably a few grumpy words in the case of this model, head on over to twitch.tv slash herbert underscore erpaderp or click the convenient link in the description below and give me a follow. Come say hi next time I'm live and we'll have a good old time. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. If you've built one of these and you want to share pictures, feel free to drop by our Discord community and share. It could be any model really, it doesn't have to be an SDKFZ222. You can find links to that and all of my other stuff in the description below. If you haven't done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron or YouTube member, or just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. And if you're feeling really helpful, why not share this video with your friends or anybody you think might get something out of it. As always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.